Okay. Hello. I'm, I'm already regretting things. <laughs> um, this video is all about the books that I've read and consumed as an adult that I really wish I could give to my like teenage self. That, that's the entire concept of the video. That, that's what we're going with. I am sat in a wardrobe. When I was planning out this video, this made sense. I'm now regretting that. Um, when I was a teenager, the times I did read, I really loved reading in my wardrobe. Um, I would often get in, like this isn't my teenage wardrobe, I did consider um, like <laughs> going to my mum's house and sitting in the wardrobe I used to see to read because uh, it, it's like built in wardrobe so it's still there. Um, I decided against that so hey I had some sense um, but yeah here I am. Let's just ignore that fact and just get on with the video. <laughs> okay. Um, so I read a bit as a teenager. I'd read you know a few things a year I was very happy with it. I was a very casual reader. I didn't read anything as a teenager apart from maybe like the Mortal Instruments series that I feel like really helped like define me <laughs> and help me figure shit out basically is what I'm trying to say. Um, and I don't know who this video is for because I know from looking at like the analytics of the channel that most people that watch this channel are between 17 and 34. So <laughs> This video isn't really for anyone. I guess if there's any books that you wish you could give to your teenage self, like comment them down below. Maybe you've got a teenager in your life and this might be helpful. I really don't know. Hopefully you at least enjoy the video. Uh, I'm going to first of all talk about three non-fiction books that I wish I could give my teenage self to like better myself and be a better human at such an age where most humans are arseholes I guess is the easiest way to put it you know like I was definitely a massive arsehole as a teenager I feel like most teenagers are at least some point so yeah three three non-fictions that I'm like you should have read this this would have helped and then two fiction series that I just wish I could have given my teenage self because they would have been even more amazing than what I found them as an adult if I'd have read them as a teenager so that's the vibe, that's what we're doing, that's what we're going with. I guess let's just get into it. There's, there's, there's no easy way to do transitions in this. Let's just get into it. The first book I wish I could give to my teenage self is The Hormone Diaries, The Bloody Truth About Our Periods. Now, I will say, just in case anyone is here for like, you know, factual good information, it does clearly say on the back and in this that it's for 15 plus. If I could, I would give this to my 12 year old self. When I just started my period, I didn't really have a clue what I was doing. I'd say between like the ages of like 12 and 16 periods were just an awkward thing that you didn't really know how to talk about. You, you didn't really know how to talk about it with like parents, family, friends. Like you just didn't. Or at least I didn't. Hopefully things are better now with like the internet and shit. But yeah, definitely when I was a teenager, it wasn't this super easy thing to navigate. And I feel like this book would have really helped. I've read this. I read it really recently actually. Personally, I'm not aware of anything in here that I wouldn't be happy with my 12, 13 year old self reading. I think if there was anything that at that age I felt uncomfortable with, I'd just skip it. But like, there was nothing explicit, there was nothing... There's no reason that I can see why this needs to be 15 plus, except I'm guessing it's some sort of legal reason, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would have given this to my teenage self 100%. Even just like, this might sound really stupid, but... There's even a big section in here, which period products should I use? And as a teenager, I just used whatever there was. Like, I didn't even think about exploring with that. And it wasn't until, like, I was a full-on adult. I was probably, like, 20 when I started figuring out, like, I could actually look into this. Like, it's my body. I should be able to see what's best for me and what works best for me. And, yeah, I, I think this would have been a really amazing read and would have helped me a lot in those really awkward teenage years like for reference this is me on holiday I literally went on my mom's Facebook page to find this this is me on the holiday between year six and year seven when I started my period do, do, does this child look capable to like deal with that like it's absolutely crazy to me that we just expect like children who have periods to like just to automatically be able to sort it out and like go with it um yeah there were some awkward years there. I would definitely give this to my teenage self. 
Now, the next book I'd give to my teenage self is this one. This is We Should All Be Feminists. No, <laughs> I'm really hopeful that it's not the same now as when I was a teenager. Like, I I'm 26 now for reference. I'm really hoping that things have changed. But when I was a teenager, like, feminism and, like, being a feminist still kind of felt like a bit of a dirty word. Like, it was like, oh my gosh, like, oh, like, wh why? I really feel like myself, at least as an early teen, like, by the time I'd got to, like, 15, 16 and later, you know, I'd realised the world sucks. <laughs> the world sucks more for women. And equality should be something that everyone wants. So like I had realised that by like teenage years. But this to me, I, I read this almost every year since I first started reading it four years ago now, I think it was. And it's really good. It's a nice little reminder and a nice way to just be like, here are all the obvious ways of why we should be a feminist. It has been over a year since I've read this. I'm due a reread. But we essentially just see reasons why feminism should be a thing like very easy simple things and if you don't want to read the book if, if you're like looking at this and you haven't read it, it it's actually adapted from a ted talk that was given it does say on the first page let me find it there's a ted talk from december 2012 um from the conference focused on africa and that is what this has been like adapted from so you can always i'm sure there's probably a video out there somewhere but yeah i i would definitely give this to myself as a teenager i think the earlier and the sooner that you can start fighting for equality and like justice and realizing what absolute bullshit a lot of things are the better honestly i don't know if you but i everyone should be equal i'm gonna leave it as that because i feel like i'm rambling on but that's that one and then the final non-fiction book that i wish i could give to my teenage self is a quick and easy guide to queer and trans identities this is so useful like even reading this as an adult there are a couple of little things that i learned in here and i just feel like this is me as an adult now who you know is in a world where everything is accepted you know if people are arsehole if someone is unaccepting of anyone i don't have to associate with them i can you know if they're like close i guess i can like try my best to be like hey like you're kind of incorrect here maybe you should look into this more maybe you should like educate yourself and like you know be a kinder person but if that's not enough i don't have to ever associate with them i can just be gone like i have no qualms with that whatsoever and i feel like having something like this when i was growing up when i was a teenager it would have just made me realize like everyone is valid everyone is perfect everyone is entitled to be whoever they want to be and everyone should just accept that and like obviously i know that's idealistic thinking like we don't even yet live in a world like that now but surely if you think the way you would like it to be positive mindset equals positive outcome i don't know but yeah i, I just feel like teenage heather would have really really got a lot out of this in terms of both you know friends family like just being supportive uh knowing the correct words knowing what to say not not like getting things wrong i guess is a really easy way to say it the reason i struggle with this one so much is there was nothing out there like this when i was a teenager you know like i think when i was a teenager there was oh, i can't remember what it was now but there was some sort of popular show and there was like a gay kiss on there and it was like a massive thing and like as a teenager you're like this is stupid but it was a massive thing and like you know like in the household i grew up in my parents watched the news like you'd hear it sort of stuff and it's like that that's the world i came from as a teenager like none of this was like accepted among adults yet like although i feel like my generation and like the age i was everyone was <sighs> relatively accepting like the majority of people were just accepting of everyone i don't feel like we had anyone to look up to when it came to that like a lot of the older people who are in media nowadays like older than me and are like openly gay or openly trans or anything like that even if they were back then it wasn't open and stuff like that and i just feel like yeah if i was a teenager today 
this would be amazing if i was a teenager back then this would have been amazing but like i don't even know how it would have computed with the real world um and with the world i was living in back then but yeah it's a really amazing book it's all in a like graphic novel format i'm literally only getting title pages there we go graphic novel format and it's just really good really educational really easy to digest really easy to follow and understand yeah i, I would have liked to have educated my teenage self more and not have had to educate myself once I'd already become an adult, I guess is the easiest way to say it. Um, yeah. Okay, so those were the non-fictions. Let's move on to the fiction books. So there's actually just two fiction series. So the first series, I wish I could give like my younger teenage self. These are the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series with the first one being The Lightning Thief. Oh my God, these, these are amazing. So I read these when I was about 18, 19 and then read them again a couple of years ago. And they're so good, they're so fun, they're so interesting. I feel like you learn a lot about like the grief myths and like the backgrounds of it, but you also learn a lot about these characters, um, things like dyslexia are even in this, like a lot of the kids in this have dyslexia, everyone's welcome. It, it's just a very nice story that as an adult I read and was completely consumed by this world. And the entire time I was reading it, I was like, if I would have read this at like the perfect age, like if I would have read this at a younger age, I would have had just such a better time. Like I would have, like as much as an adult I was involved in it, there are things that as an adult, when you're reading about kids doing stuff, you can't be 100% absorbed because stupid decisions are a thing. Um, but I can just, yeah, I can really imagine if I'd have read these as a teenager, if I'd have really, you know, at the age of 13, picked these up and read through them, I'd have consumed them. I would have thought so much about them and I feel like they would have opened up my reading world more as well reading something like this it would have just opened up more things to read more things to explore yeah but there's not a lot to it except for when I read them they were great but if I'd have read them when I was younger they would have been amazing and I just wish I could have had that experience so that's so it's a lot, a lot shorter I know but yeah and then the very last series that i wish i could have read as a teenager are oh, the heartstopper graphic novel series right now as i'm filming this volumes one to four are out there is going to be a fifth volume so volume one is just heartstopper volume one these are amazing these are so cute so lovely and even now as an adult i can't wait for volume five to come out i can't wait to finish the series and on the back it simply says boy meets boy boys become friends boys fall in love and i feel like that's all you need to know it's cute <laughs> It's in a very like nice world, especially in the first one. There's nothing major that goes on. It's just very like kind of slice of lifey about two boys falling in love. But the later on in the series, yeah, it also deals very well and still in a light and easy to digest, like very serious topics. Like especially in the last few, there are some serious topics, and I do believe. Let me double check this. Yeah, so on the first page there is a content warning that tells you like the sort of things that could be in there and like just to be careful basically. But they're, they're all things that kind of centre around and focus on mental health. But it does it in such a great way, in such an accepting way and I don't know, I feel like the ways that people react as well in this are so lovely. And I wish I could have read this as a teenager. Like these weren't around when I was a teenager, like these did not exist, they were not in the world at least not published in the world i don't know when they started being worked on but yeah i wish i could give these to my teenage self i wish i could like read these and consume these and have grown up in a more accepting world which i'm realizing that this video is just looking really sad to be honest um thank goodness we do seem to be moving forwards still a long way to go but we do seem to at least be moving forwards um yeah, I really wish I could give these to my teenage self. I think I realised this a couple of years ago. That are like, within mine and Jay's family, there's some people who are like teenagerish age. And we have given these as gifts before. And like being able to do that was just lovely. It was so great. And it makes it, I think it makes you realise that, you know, hopefully the world is going to continue becoming a better place as the older generations become more accepting and the younger generations are brought up to be more accepting so yes so yeah those are all the books that i wish i could give to my teenage self those are all the books that 
I just feel like it would have really impacted me one way or another if I'd have read as a teenager, whether that just be the love of reading or learning or getting into a new format, like graphic novels. I didn't even know that as a teenager. I didn't read my first graphic novel till I was 24, I think. So yeah, I I really wish I could give those to my teenage self. Obviously that's not a thing. And I'm pretty happy with where my life is right now. So if a time machine was a real thing, would I actually go back and do it? I don't know, because would that alter the person I am today? And I'm quite happy with this, and I'm quite happy with the life that I am slowly building around me. I don't know. But thinking back on it, those are books that, if I could give to my teenage self, I think would help me in one way or another. So, yeah. That was the entire video. I do hope you enjoyed it. I didn't need to sit in the wardrobe, but we did. <laughs> yeah. Let me know down below if there are any books that you wish you could give to your teenage self or if you agree with any of these. Um, give the video a like if you liked it. Subscribe down below for more content like this and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye!